Tony, um, and I didn't realize I was in the wild here, but you know, the wilds of Davis, I guess. Um, so I'm going to try and, as Tony said, address those questions in my own way. Um, maybe not in the same order they were asked, but I tried to kind of follow that organization. Um, so just by way of background, uh, CEDEN is really about ambient water quality data um, or monitoring data. So we have a lot of water in California, despite the fact we're in a drought. Um, at least we usually have a lot of water that we want to monitor. Um, so there's just some numbers to give you a sense of how much is out there that's, that we're trying to keep track of. Um, so CEDEN was started a number of years ago, um, actually before I came on board, um, with support from the EPA and the water boards and the State uh, Surface Water Ambient Monitoring Program, or SWAMP. Um, SWAMP's been in existence for, for quite a while, but didn't have a good mechanism for distributing its data. Um, so one part of the motivation of CEDEN was as a vehicle for getting data out there to folks. But beyond just swamp data, which is one program in the state, the idea was to get data from a variety of monitoring programs in a kind of normalized, or I shouldn't say normalized, too geeky, um, kind of a consistent format that people looking for this kind of information could find. Um, so, so it started out with this as a, uh, as a, as a funding source and an, and an instigator. Uh, we have lots of data in California. That's not a surprise to anyone in this room. Uh, there's literally hundreds of organizations, whether they're, you know, agencies, NGOs, not, you know, uh, researchers and so on, collecting data about water in California. Uh, but as we've all heard this morning and talking about uh, cataloging and data libraries, it's hard to find the data, and when you do, it doesn't always make sense. You don't know what it is, or the metadata is not clear. Um, so for somebody trying to work with this, it's a really difficult task. So uh, one of the main uh, or a foci of CEDEN is uh, these two points at the bottom, accessing of the data uh, that we obtain or organize in the this, in this system, and making that data comparable, meaning data from different programs can be looked at apples to apples uh, once it's uh, gone through CEDEN. So the amount of data question. Um, I, so these, uh, as I said, we're compiling data from a whole bunch of programs. I don't know the exact count off the top of my head today, but it's you know, over, you know, several hundred uh, programs contribute data from a whole variety of different sources. Again, agency sources um, through to you know, NGOs and citizen groups, tribes, and private entities that collect data for various reasons about our water. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different types of data in CEDEN, uh, and these are constantly growing, and, and, and we add new types of data or new parameters as new things are getting me uh, measured. But in excess of 7.5 million records as of when I compiled these numbers, um, so it's a fairly large system um, of data for the state. And our real goal here is, again, getting data that's not just accessible, but also comparable, meaning I can use it all for, regardless of the originating source. So to that end, what we've done, and this is a tricky one, um, is try to give people templates and, and formats of do documenting their data that are consistent when they contribute them to CEDEN. So we use Excel. We heard this morning uh, how popular Excel is as a database for a lot of researchers or data collectors. Um, so using that as a medium of exchange, uh, there are Excel templates for the different data types that people can contribute to CEDEN, and that's very easy for folks, uh, and most people have Excel available to them. Um, we do have a number of basic minimum data elements or data requirements that you have to include um, for your data to be useful. Obvious things like when, where, and what you collected. Um, we're not trying to, to do a full-blown you know, ontology here where you have to follow a thousand rules to get data submitted to CEDEN. We wanted to make it accessible. Um, but there are some controlled vocabulary and terminology and things to, to make that work better. Uh, for Depending on the organization contributing data, sometimes if they have big data sets and big data systems in place, that's done by a crosswalking of their existing system to CEDEN so that that can be flowed easily for smaller programs and projects. It's often working with that provider of data to get them started in a CEDEN-compatible format from the get-go. 
So the question of data growth or additions to Seeden, um, literally every week there's new data going into Seeden from our data centers. Um, so I, you know, I can't tell you how much on a given day or week that would be, but um, there are a number of categories of data flow into Seeden. There's several programs around the state that are ongoing programs and contribute data on a regular basis, whether that's quarterly or monthly or annually. Um, so those flow in as a regular process. Um, there are a number of programs that are submitting their data to Seeden as some kind of a contractual or permit requirement. So those are often, again, done at the end of the project or maybe at points throughout the project. Um, so we get some blips in the, in the flow there. And then there's a whole bunch of providers who just want to give their data to Seeden because getting data to Seeden makes it accessible and available and visible to the larger community. So um, a lot of our smaller data providers, they may be NGOs or smaller organizations that don't have internal capacity to serve up data, but if they get it into Seeden, their data becomes available not just to the world, but also to them. They can go back and find their own data a year later. I have to have one big schematic with lots of arrows because, you know, that's part of what you do in computing, right? Um, in really simple terms, Seeden has lots of interconnections. So this question of who do we interact with and how does Seeden uh, work with other systems. Um, on the left, you can see we have sort of those blue circles representing a variety of data providers. Anyone who wants to put data into Seeden um, often will go through one of our data centers, which is the box in the center. Um, and then that data moves to the Seeden system in the upper right. Um, out of the Seeden system, we feed data to a number of other systems and services for uh, communicating data or making data available. So that's the outbound arrow. Uh, we, you know, we do that in a number of ways. We also feed our data up to the EPA Water Quality Exchange Network. So that's getting shared out also at the federal level. Um, and then tribes sometimes go through the feds, sometimes come through us, um, different, different pathways. So what you can see here is we have a fairly interconnected system of data flow in and out of Seeden to make the data as exchangeable and accessible as possible. Um, a little bit more on, on templates and data structures. Uh, we have a variety of data types listed here. These are the common uh, data sets that have been collected on ambient water quality monitoring programs for a long time. Um, but within each of these, there are continually evolving lists of parameters. So there may be emerging contaminants or new, new measurements that are being collected. Um, our team looks at those new parameters and adds them into uh, the controlled vocabulary associated with these templates over time. So it's, again, it's an evolving system. Um, all of our stuff is documented fairly well. We have um, a a document associated with each data template that explains what goes in there and how it's structured and formatted to help people uh, get familiar and started with Seeden. Uh, there are data center staff that also can help out when people have questions or need training. Uh, but in a lot of cases, it's pretty self-apparent uh, for people starting out. Um, and then when data is submitted to Seeden by a provider, they upload their Excel template it goes through a data checker that evaluates the, at least the completeness and consistency of the data. Um, some of the things we heard about this morning are numbers within bounds, are terms recognized, are all the columns that are required filled in. Um, if not, the user gets a response back from the system telling them where there's missing or incorrect information so they can correct that. Um, if it's good, then it can move on through the system. So we have a number of data users and providers in Seeden. Um, first and foremost, I'd say, um, based on the funding and the purpose behind it, uh, the State Water Board and the EPA as regulatory agencies are very interested in this kind of monitoring data um, and the assessments that come out of that. So those are certainly primary clients. But we have a whole variety of folks using these data for all kinds of different purposes at the local or regional levels, NGOs, you know, whoever, students doing class projects and so on. Um, a few of the more formalized uh, uses of Seeden are, um, in the upper right is just uh, the current Seeden query tool. Uh, that's where people who are just looking for a particular set of data in raw form can go in and query out and download the data for their own analysis. But we also, as I said, feed our data out to other systems um, powered by Seeden, as we like to say. 
Um, this is basically providing a data mark to a portal or a system that's representing that data. So the state water board um, and, and resources agencies uh, have these water quality portals about different topics through the monitoring council. Um, we feed out uh, some other folks as well. So without reading a bunch of words, uh, we have a number of different par partnerships um, on two sides. One is we're trying not to duplicate the work of others. So where there are already data systems, um, either in the state or other places that we can inter make interact with Seed and collaborate with, uh, we aren't trying to recapture data from those systems. We're trying to crosswalk them and make them talk to each other. Um, we, as I said, feed out data to a number of different uh, agencies and organizational portals and things of that sort. And the last thing I want to highlight on this slide is uh, the last bullet. There's a, a group that approached us, a nonprofit, that developed a mobile app for phones called testthewater.org. Uh, they built a, an application that citizen groups can use to collect data, and it exports that data directly into the seed and template format. So if a local watershed group wants to collect data and submit it to seed and they have an easy to use application to do that. It's not the full blown every parameter in the universe, but it gives them the more common ones. And I think that partnership, uh, which was initiated on the outside, uh, is gonna provide another easy pathway. Um, so just a few things that I think have been success points for us. Uh, one is um, working with the data providers um, early on in their data collection process to understand templates and, and how to format data um, it has been very valuable in getting folks on board. Um, we do have some standards, as I said, but we try to keep those at an accessible level. So a program that's not as sophisticated still has valuable data, we can, we can capture that. Um, more rigorous you know, programs that have lots of, of QA and lots of detail behind them can also be accommodated, but we didn't want the bar to be too high to get useful data captured in the system. It's not useful if we don't know how to find it. Um, so that sort of stuff is is really been a, a good success point for us. As I said, leveraging relationships with others, so we're not rebuilding you know some massive. We want all the data in the world. Let's interact with other systems and other folks like that schematic showed and also trying to build slowly. Um, so we've really focused our initial development and data on the regulatory processes and reporting. Um, it certainly serves other purposes, but we didn't want to try and be all things to all people. Uh, we had to start with a targeted uh, audience. We've heard that today several times as a way to get a system that was useful. Um, so a couple of comments on where we're going next. How's my time? Oh, okay, I'll be fast. You let me in the wild. Um, we're continuing to develop uh, the system as we go forward. We're doing some work on optimizing and, and streamlining the system uh, back end right now. Uh, we continue to work uh, at building out external clients and, and ways we can provide our data um, to other sorts of end users. And over time, are, are looking at ways to build in tools um, for the state and others to do automated computations of things they need uh, in their daily workflows so that the data doesn't have to be downloaded and manually processed each time. So with that, I will stop, and I don't know if I have question time, so I'll... Are there any questions? Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Again, we're hustling through here, 